So this is the exercise number four for improving the pelvic alignment for SI joint pain or sciatic pain. And if you haven't watched my last three videos and I'll put the links down below so you can check them out. If you want to learn how to retrain your body and then movement safely and then effectively and then move better, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. I am Taro Iwamoto. I am a Feldenkrais practitioner with my background in athletic training, physical therapy, martial arts, and the Feldenkrais method. I have helped many people like you overcome and then move beyond the pain and the limitations. Now it's your turn and let's dive in. It is very important to watch the entire video and do the exercise without any distraction so that you can fully attend to your body and to get the best results. And go ahead and lie down on your back and then use and grab a pillow or any support underneath the head if you need it and yeah, so that you can feel you can stay more comfortable throughout the exercise. So first you're going to check the weight and the contact of the pelvis and feel the balance between the right side and the left side. And oftentimes there's a little bit of bias and leaning into one side and then the other side. Don't change anything, no correction needed. And because as you go through the exercise and then it's going to really uh, change the balance between the two sides. So we'll find out. And with your legs bent, with the feet shoulder width apart, knees shoulder width apart, with your arms on the floor, relaxed, just resting, and bring attention to the right shoulder first. Okay, so you begin to lift your right shoulder away from the floor just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, okay? And then you let go. And you pause like a second or so before you begin to do it again. Lift your right shoulder, don't make a big movement. Just a little bit, so you feel the contact of the right shoulder and moving away from the floor. And then as you let go, and you can feel the contact returns and the weight returns to the floor. And make the movement as smooth as you can so that you don't just lift and let go. Smoothly, you are lifting the shoulder and then letting it go, letting it come back to the floor. And then as you do this movement, now visualize, go ahead and visualize the weight, lifting the right shoulder, and then you are shifting the weight across, diagonally across, down to the left pelvis. So you can feel the weight starting to shift a little bit more towards the left side of your spine, left side of your rib cage, and then moving into the left side of your pelvis. Just to visualize the diagonal line as you're lifting the right shoulder and then allowing the contact and kind of shifting across diagonally and towards the left side of the pelvis. And let go, and then when you return, you return to the starting point. And if you feel any interference along the line and do a little less, you don't force it. You just visualize the movement is kind of some weight is shifting across this way. And so that at the end, you feel a little bit of shifting, a little bit more weight and on your left side of your hip and the pelvis. And then as you return, as you let go of the shoulder, and then you can feel the weight returns to where you start. And once the movement becomes a little smoother, a little easier, then you stop and switch over to the left side. Same thing, you notice the two sides are very different. Just like you have habitual use of the hips and your legs, habitual use of the rib cage, 
we have a habitual use of the arms, shoulders, right? Dominant side. And then that is going to influence all the rest of the, the bodies, obviously. So you notice a difference between the two sides. Maybe one side is a little harder. It doesn't connect as smoothly to the opposite side of the hip. So you find out. This may be the easier side for you, and this may be a harder side. You find out. So lightly lift your left shoulder away from the floor, and then let go. Allowing the weight to travel across diagonally, and downward to the right hip pelvis. And usually the one side feels lighter, one side feels heavier. So is this the heavier side, is this the harder side, or the lighter side? So just for fun, you can just uh, experience and compare two sides. And then, if you don't mind sharing that in the comment below, and let me know, is this the lighter side? Which side is the lighter side? Which side is the heavier side? And the natural tendency for most people is that to work harder on the heavier side because you feel like you need to work harder to lift it more. What works the best is actually not to do that. And what works the best is to work less. Instead of trying to increase an effort to lift it more on the heavier side, actually trying to lift a little less on that side. The reason why it's heavier is not just because of the shoulder, but because of the entire um, the, the whole relationship between the shoulder and your rib cage, spine, and the pelvis. Then as you go through the movements, and then it starts to actually change and improve that coordination between the shoulders and the wrist. And then movement becomes lighter. And then you're going to notice that how that is going to impact the balance of the pelvis. And as this side becomes a little bit easier, don't expect the two sides to be the same. One side is always going to be easier than the other side. That's fine. Even the harder side can get a little bit easier. We'll take that, okay? And you're going to alternate. Lift your right, shot, uh, right side once, let go. Wait until the right side returns to the floor and then begin to lift the left side and let go. And go ahead and alternate. So traveling across one diagonal and then traveling across the other diagonal. So you can feel the weight travels and it shifts between the two sides of the pelvis too. As you lift the right shoulder and then the pelvis turns a little bit to the left and then let go. And as you lift the left shoulder and then the weight travels and pelvis rotates and turns a little bit to the right. And once you're done, come back and check the weight and the contact of your pelvis and feel the difference. Do you notice any difference? Is it, does it feel a little more balanced, your pelvis? And how does that change your comfort? And you can sit up. Right, so if you have done the last three exercises and they're very similar, right? Then so you can, the point is that the pelvic the imbalance of the pelvis or asymmetry of the pelvis. It's not really, it doesn't happen in isolation. Everything influences the pelvis. Okay, how we, we use our feet, how we stand, how we breathe, how we move our ribs and how we move our arms and shoulders. And it are going to be habitual use and habitual movement patterns are going to influence the, the rest. So if you want to improve that alignment or the balance of the pelvis. For whatever the reasons, SI joint pain or sciatic pain, it would be really good to explore that whole movement pattern so that you can improve in coordination between your arms, your ribs, spine, your legs, and breathing included. If you want to improve your back pain, be sure to grab your free movement guide to pain-free back at the link below. Check out these videos. And if you like this video and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe and share with your friends, comment below how helpful you found this video was. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Happy mindful movement. Bye-bye.